Well, primary first started when Paul Tristan and I um, were thinking about a new exhibition um, leading on from last year's um, exhibition at the Round Tower. And we all decided that because of the rise of mobile phone photography, we'd quite like... Um, we'd like it to take that form. We, we thought there'd be a lot more people that would be up for taking part. Um, one of the most interesting things as well is is how the different applications can be used. So obviously on the iPhone you've, you've got various apps that can be downloaded and various other phone models as well. So you've got things like Instagram, camera bag, um, you know, which, in, which enable you to almost customise your photographs. Um, to get them looking how you actually want to. Well, I think it was really about capturing the city, um, making, you know, a sort of documenting the city in as many different ways as possible. And Tristan thought it would be really good uh, to have a theme, and we all decided on, on primary, the primary colours, um, but also the actual colours used down the dockyard for the signals. Well, I think with all Strong Island projects, we we sort of use social media quite a lot and uh, obviously we've got the website we've also got um, the Twitter feed and Facebook so we, um, we we sort of worked on getting a series of posters together to actually advertise it so it was a call for content initially an explanation of what it was about um, where, the ex where the exhibition would be held uh, how long it was on for um, we also then uh, contacted the local the local media and we've got a uh, two-page double spread in the news and um, we were interviewed on BBC Radio um, again all about sort of call for content so that really helped and I think you know it's important to um, to sort of use that as much as possible. I, I quit my job um, three or four years ago maybe longer than that now um, to um, turn what was a, a hobby into a career of photography, um, it coincided with um, you know with a, a young family, um, and I found that going out and shooting at night was really the only time that I could go out. Um, so I got really got into um, shooting long exposures and um, trying to sort of beat the camera, be creative with stuff. Um, I do a lot of star trails, so. Um, setting the camera up on a tripod and waiting for the Earth's rotation to cause motion through of the stars through the sky. It meant that you were in full control of how the the exposure turned out. Um, you know, sometimes dealing for for many minutes, um, and um, it meant that you could create the result you're looking for straight out of camera without needing to sit in uh, in front of a computer and work away in Photoshop. Following the Strong Island blog is a, a really great way to keep in touch with what's going on culturally in and around Portsmouth. Um, there's great uh, information and bios on, on other photographers and other creative practitioners and there's also some really good um, uh, event information for, for you know gigs and what have you. But the thing that really struck me was the, um, the sort of promotion of this, this competition called Primary um, and it really, it really got my interest because not only was it all about phonography, um, but there was a theme to it. So mobile phone photography is kind of similar, but kind of very different at the same time. Um, the similar aspects are that you can see exactly what you're going to get. So if you want to control the result, then you end up. Um, sort of manipulating what you can see on screen uh, you know in, the, in a preview so you touch the screen to get uh, to, to adjust the exposure and to adjust the focus and what you see on the screen is what you're going to get so to that extent um, the you know the, the ethos is quite similar I think what the big differences between um, mobile phone photography and SLR photography for me at least is the uh, the kind of instant uh, sharing aspect of it as soon as you've got that picture you can share it and and you can share it with the network that matters to you um, for me that's the that's the fundamental difference um, is it's it's so instant but that doesn't mean that it is any more disposable there's also this really um, kind of popular 
uh, occupation at the moment to filter stuff to death and I have indulged with that a little bit um, so sometimes I take pictures with with filters in mind um, on the phone and sometimes I take the, the picture first and um, try and see what the what sort of preset effects I can get afterwards. The exhibition was actually presented in a very unusual format uh, in regards to the fact because we had so many entries we really wanted to try and sort of show, showcase that as best possible. So Tristan, in regards to the exhibition, wanted a different type of format, different type of sort of layout. So what he did was he actually split them up um, by hand and sort of colour coordinated them. So we had um, kind of red, blue and yellow s sort, of, sort of split off. And he, he tried to kind of link as well um, the different photographs. And I think, you know, it's, it's turned out quite quite differently and quite amazingly because we've actually got those different colours. So really the sort of primary is the focus here, yeah, as well as the actual city um, views. And yeah, it's very impressive. Um, it was sort of wallpapered onto the walls, which um, without the help of James and Bill, um, I think Paul and I would have been screaming a lot louder than we were originally, but uh, it sort of worked out in the end. great fun to go in and to well in fact to walk past people the, the venue was so busy that there were people outside uh, I mean, it was a great evening fortunately but you know there's people outside having you know having a drink and chatting and uh, you know that you could see that there was a real um, a real buzz circulating um, and to go in and to see the way that the guys had, had um, produced the exhibition um, it, it was fantastic. I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, you know, images printed in a uniform standard and then hung, uh, hung as wallpaper around the walls of a, of a creative venue. It's fantastic. The opening night for primary um, was very successful and there was just this constant stream of people coming in. Um, a lot of supporters of, of Strong Island that had taken part in last year's exhibition as well. And I think just just sort of generally where sort of Bonzo Studio is, is, is situated, we, we had quite a lot of sort of traffic, people walking past. And people were just staring, people would come in and they would just look at the walls and, and be sort of drawn in by the different variety um, on show. So that was quite good, just to see people milling around and standing in one spot for quite a long time, and then sometimes walking away and even coming back there. So it, it was it was actually quite good, and it, it set off quite a um, conversation to a piece as well. The appearance of the banks of images. Um, there was something about the, the, the whole exhibition, um, you know, re al almost regardless of, of what the, the, the content and the subject matter was, there was something about the whole exhibition that made the, um, the presentation much bigger than the, the sum of, of the parts. I'm quite flattered, as it as it turns out, that my image was chosen as, as the the winning image because you know other people had, had noticed the same things as me, and you know really it just came down to to luck. I think more than more than anything else that um, my image was uh, was selected um, as uh, as first first prize, first place. You know, other people had chosen the same the same buildings. There were people who'd shot with reflections, and you know, I just I suppose I just lucked in that my my image had the the right combination that appealed to the to the judges. Well, I think you know, the exhibition is is finishing at Bonza Studio now at the end of the month, 
and you know the actual plans for it is that all the photographs um, that were entered into the exhibition will all be featured um, in, in a special tab on the Strong Island website so that again you know it's almost sort of given back to the community those that sort of took part they can see their work online and it will have a sort of legacy there as well the interesting thing for me is that people have investigated their city and they've kind of documented as much as possible um, the things that you would normally expect to find but also the things that you wouldn't necessarily expect to find so it, it's been quite um, quite varied to see the results for that